Hey everybody, uh, being away from my computer while I'm traveling means that I have to communicate via video and then being kicked off of Facebook for a few days for disagreeing with Dr. Fauci um, makes it even more difficult to, to communicate. So this is how I have to do it. Um, I drove through a blizzard today to get to a rally in Helena. Um, like a severe, severe blizzard. Um, but I am almost home on gravel and it's safe. So nobody send me hate mail over using my phone and driving at the same time, please. That would be great. Um, I have great news to announce and I announced it yesterday, but I'll announce it again. Um, prayer works, praise God. And the pipes burst at the Planned Parenthood clinic, one of the two, and it happens to be the one where they murder people. And so it's going to be about four or five months before they get online uh, to be able to surgically murder people again. Now they're still passing out chemical cocktails to destroy women. Uh, excuse me. Well, they destroy women sometimes too, but to destroy uh, babies with chemical warfare, but, uh, surgically, um, it's going to make things more difficult, uh, which glory to God. I mean, solely Deo glory to that. Um, but here's why I'm concerned. Um, the company that has contracted with Planned Parenthood to restore like restore X type restore the damage that has been done so that they can rebuild the clinic and refurbish it and get it going again is a Christian company owned by a Christian man. That's perplexing. Considering the sixth commandment says thou shall not kill. And um, I know the man's church and I expect tomorrow to speak directly to that individual in a Matthew 18 sense. Now, he doesn't go to my church, but I'm going to try the spirit of Matthew 18. And um, I'm going to go to his pastor. And uh, we hope that within three hours, because that's the time frame I'm giving him, three hours, to pull all of his workers and equipment from the Planned Parenthood location. It's almost as though a statue of Molech where they would send babies through the ovens of the ancient God um, has been broken and you're helping to repair it. And what I don't appreciate is as a Christian, the excuses that I've been given for why you find this acceptable. Like excuses like, well, I'm not helping to repair or rebuild it I'm just restoring the damage that has been done. Dude, they can't finish the work to, to, to complete the project until you're done restoring it. So stop helping. Stop it. Or Christian excuses like I'm heaping coals of fire upon their head. Or the dumbest question I heard today was, well, I mean, as a Christian, if you saw a Planned Parenthood employee with a flat tire on their car, wouldn't you stop to help? And the answer is, if they're going to work, hell no. I'd pull out my pocket knife and pop the other three tires. I, I'm not going to help facilitate this individual murdering people today. What's wrong with you? Uh, or, or any other excuse that might be given. This is murder. And you're facilitating it. So, without being the bad guy, I'm not trying to make idle threats, and I promise my promises are not idle. <laughs> Trust me, they're not idle. Um, if it's not pulled out three hours after I try to speak to you, whether or not you answer the phone, because I, I have a tendency to believe you won't answer the phone. Maybe you will. If in three hours you haven't pulled out all of your workers from that location and I'll have eyes on the scene to tell me if it's true or not, um, I'm going to talk.
talk to your pastor because you refuse to engage in Matthew 18, step one. And I'm going directly to step two. Then I'm going to your church. And uh, I'm going to explain to your entire congregation that you're facilitating murder. Then, uh, you know, Phil, the Ten Commandments guy, we're going to put up a 10 by 20 foot billboard outside of your location, no matter how much it costs, no matter the expense. Um, we're going to put up a billboard in a prominent location informing the entire community that you help facilitate abortion. And then let me add, not everyone who works for you is a fan of this. And so I have in my possession a list of your customers and they're all going to be notified that you're helping Planned Parenthood. Um, I'm gonna put you out of business. Because you deserve it. You're gonna lose so much more money than you ever would have made with this one project. Now, years ago, uh, three or four years ago, we dealt with this as a group, Gideon Knox group that I represent in Norman, Oklahoma, in which a heating and air, central heating and air guy, um, was helping to uh, to you know to, to, to fix up the Planned Parenthood uh, clinic, and uh, he uh, happened to be the deacon of his own Baptist church, and we spoke to the pastor. The pastor was like, "Well, you know, a job's a job, doing the opposite of what a pastor ought to do." So we sent people into the church to inform the church and then um, within a few days he pulled out of the job having no other choice that's what we're going to do and we're going to be protesting at your home we're going to be picketing your business and it's going to be a living nightmare because I can't imagine any nightmare being worse than a baby being torn apart limb from limb in its mother's womb. Now, certain things that have come to me secondhand really concern me. As you use Christianity as an example or an excuse for why you're doing this. For example, you know, this isn't pertaining to Christianity necessarily, but well, you're not, you're not rebuilding the facility. You're just helping to restore it. Well, they, they, can't res they can't rebuild the facility until it's restored. So stop facilitating murder. Or how about this one? Uh, this, this one was given to me today. The question was asked, if you saw a Planned Parenthood employee on the side of the road in the wintertime with a flat tire, would you not help, help them fix the tire? And the answer is, uh, hell no. Do you think I'm going to help fix the tire of a Planned Parenthood employee to get to work to kill people? I'm going to pop every other tire. The pocket knife is coming out. I'll take the misdemeanor. Whatever. Send me to jail. I don't care. There's no way. It's essentially as if the temple, or rather the idol of Molech, where the furnace in the middle of its belly uh, where people would burn their children and infanticide to the god Molech has been broken and you're there to help. It's as if uh, Auschwitz, Auschwitz furnaces aren't working correctly during the Third Reich and the Final Solution so you show up to give a lending hand so thanks to Phil and the ten, you know the Ten Commandments guy, if you've seen those signs around the state, we're going to put up a ten by twenty foot billboard outside your business, no matter the ex the expense or the cost. Don't care, don't care how much it costs. Uh, and we're going to warn uh, anyone who comes close to your business that you help facilitate the murder of infants. 
then let me warn you about this one. Not everyone who works for your business is wild about this. So I have a list of all of your customers and they're all going to be notified as to what you're doing. Do you think they're going to be happy about that? I suspect you're going to lose far more business. You're going to lose far more money than the 20 pieces of silver that you gain from helping to restore Planned Parenthood. I'm going to your pastor. I'm going to your church. I'm going to send people to your church. And they're going to warn the entire congregation as to what you're doing. I know that sounds rough. That's hardball, right? You have three hours of notice from the time I try to get a hold of you tomorrow. Not from the time that we talk. I have a tendency to think that you might avoid my phone call. But I'm going to try to call you tomorrow. And from that point forward, uh, a clock is going to be set. If it's not removed, the workers, the vans, your, your, your business there within three hours, uh, all of this comes down on you post haste. Most of all, what scares me is as a Christian, you've said again, secondhand, take it for what it's worth. Your conscience is clear and that one day you're aware you'll have to stand before Jesus but you think your conscience is in the clear. Might I remind you that Jesus said, if someone harms one of the least of these, it's better a millstone be tied around their neck and cast into the sea. If you think I'm harsh, you should meet Jesus. One day you will stand before God. And if that thought doesn't terrify you and instead brings you comfort, you don't know the same Jesus I know because he's going to hand you a millstone and cast you into the lake of fire. Man, that sounds hard, doesn't it? But here's the thing. No matter how harsh that seems, it's not as harsh as killing babies in their mother's womb. Now, if you repent, all this goes away. Gideon Knox Group has a policy that we don't delete anything from the internet. Um, that's why I haven't said your name yet on the on on this video. It's not coming down. Um, it's not going away. But your name hasn't been mentioned yet. It will be tomorrow. Until then, be in prayer and seek God's face in repentance because you are in grave grave sin and danger of God's judgment. Don't murder people. It's in the sixth commandment. Read your Bible. If you're going to call yourself a Christian, act like Christ. And Christ didn't tolerate people abusing, molesting, harming, hurting, or killing the most innocent people on the face of the planet. You got the wrong Jesus. And when they pay you for the work you've already done, I pray that it is saturated in the blood of dead infants. And that you get to take that dripping to the bank and cash it. If you had any integrity, sir, you'd give the check back to them. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Some of you may think, man, the fight for J.D. Hall, you know, never stops. Um, so long as we're killing a million babies a year just through surgical abortion, not counting chemical warfare um, done in the womb, um, it's not going to stop. Not until Jesus comes back. And you, sir, more so than any other person that I've met this week, make me say, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. So before I try to get a hold of you tomorrow, be in prayer and seek repentance. And if you repent, man, I'm going to give you a hug. I'm going to take you out to eat. We're going to have a time of fellowship. I'm going to praise God you made the right decision. 
And if you don't, secondly, you're going to face the wrath of God. And first, you're going to face the wrath of Gideon Knox group. Consider a fair warning. God bless. Maranatha. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. By the way, uh, we went through this already. This isn't our first rodeo. In Norman, Oklahoma, a few years ago, the same type of thing was tried. We sent people to the church. And eventually that church closed down. Eventually that church split in two. Between the pastor and the chairman of deacons who was facilitating the murder of infants and the rest of the congregation filled with actual Christians. I'll be back soon. If you don't repent soon. Please make the right decision. Do it the easy way and do it God's way instead of doing it the hard way. Might God bless you. And if you don't make the right decision, might he curse you. Have a good night.